welcome back! Unfortunately, I accidentally got rid of the message uh, when I tried to save in between videos, but we've seen it. There was an encoded message, and using the decoder ring we got from the fun meal, we were able to get the key. It's a simple substitution cipher, and you're supposed to just figure it out by yourself. And what it says after you uh, decode it is Help us! We are being held captive by Scumsoft on the small moon of Pestilon. An impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We're counting on you, whoever you are. Two guys in trouble. Well, seems like we have a mission. We have to rescue these two guys who are apparently being held captive by something called Scumsoft. Which is a software company, from the sound of it. I think it's actually supposed to be a uh, reference to Microsoft. In any case, their CEO does look like Bill Gates. We'll see him later. Um, or sort of, anyway. Um, but they're being held on the moon of Pestilon, and we have no idea where that is. But we do have an explanation of the title. Pirates of Pestilon is apparently re referring to... Scumsoft, I guess. Let's see if we can find them. After all, we are a hero. Sort of. So I guess we should uh, rescue them. You slide back into the ship, closing the hatch behind you. The docking control beam begins, guiding you safely clear of Monolith Burger. All right. Well, let's see where else we can go. Turn the engines on. Because don't need to take off because we never landed. Let's look to, at the navigation system. Oh, and it's Ortega again. It seems like that's the only place that we have left that we can go. So, I guess that means that Pestilon, wherever the hell that is, can be found from there. After all, there's no other locations left in the game to explore. So let's go there. Let's punch it. Nobody following us this time? Good. Like I said in the previous video, you can actually finish the entire game without ever seeing the message from the two guys. If you haven't seen it, Roger will just constantly be wondering what the hell's going on, what the hell stuff is, and you won't know what he's doing. Now that we have seen the message, he will know what's going on. We'll see, okay, that's the shield generator and stuff like that. Okay, let's land on Ortega, which is a lava lover's paradise, according to the postcard we read. With a mighty wump, you set down the aluminum mallet on the surface of Ortega. I keep reading that wrong, but anyway. Let's look at the window. Outside the stark surface of Ortega stretches into the distance. A lava lover's paradise, to be sure. Very good. Let's stand and save as La Lava Lover's Paradise. Because, yeah, the postcard said we needed thermo weave underwear, but I'm sure they were just exaggerating. My, my, this is one hot planet. Hopefully you'll last more than a few minutes. I'm sure we will. Pum -pum -pum -pum. Oh, actually, uh, realize uh, we actually last surprisingly long. Too late, you realize that walking around unprotected on this planet is hazardous to your health. 
You feel your blood begin to boil. And he melts. You sizzle into oblivion. This planet wouldn't be so bad if you could keel keep cool somehow. It's so hot, you could fry a Vorlian phlegm snake egg. Sunbathing not recommended. It's a standard way to make something uh, sound science fiction-y. Just take an ordinary word and put some random adjectives in front of it to make it sound alien-y. Like the Vorlian phlegm snake egg or Romulan ale. Okay, well, let's wear our thermoweave underwear. After figuring out which side is the front, you put on the thermoweave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. That sounds useful. I want one. My, my, this is one hot planet. But you don't care. You're beating the heat with thermoweave underwear. Was that a commercial? It sounded like it. The planet Ortiga is truly a lava lover's paradise. Volcanic activity constantly reshapes its surface, so if you have any maps older than last week, throw them out. I don't have any maps. I actually know the layout of this place pretty much by heart, so anyway. And it's the same message. Hmm. Interesting looking structure there. Can we look at the volcano? In the distance, volcanoes spew magma from deep within the molten interior. That's what volcanoes do. Oh, it does not know the word plateau. Um. Uh, chasm? The molten lava casts a mysterious glow on the sides of the deep fissures. Watch your step. Okay, well, I. Ah! It appears that parts of this planet's surface are not entirely stable. Better be careful, or it'll end up in that lava fondue below. Lava fondue? Is that like cheese fondue? Because I like cheese fondue. Oh! Better hide. Who are these goons? Obviously loyal company men, the scum-soft employees are happily performing their duties. But looking at their weapons, you probably don't want to get too close. Yes. Scum-soft employees, eh? Well, I think if you didn't read the message, Roger wouldn't know that they are scum-soft employees. But now he does. Oh, we'd better, um... What are they doing anyway? Let's see what they have here. There's a telescope, an anemometer, an anemometer, on a pole, some seismic equipment, and a crate of some sort. And they're leaving. Which is good, I guess. You hear the roar of the pirate's scout ship taking off. The ship streaks across the sky to an unknown destination. Well, if, uh... Oh, there you go. If there are employees of Scumsoft here, I guess that means that Pestulon must be nearby. Now let's look through this telescope, which the other guy was looking through. Aha! Wait, what is that? Aha! You've discovered the force beam generator, and that moon must be Pestulon. Again, if you didn't read the encoded message, Roger would not know any of that. He'd be uh, sitting here going, what the hell is that? The narrator would not be any help. Oh. And I can't type anything well there. Can we take the telescope? Nah, it wouldn't do you any good. Okay, I guess that must be true, otherwise we could have taken it with us. Hmm. Let's see here. That is apparently an anemometer. It looks like a couple of tennis balls cut in half and spins when the wind blows. Can we take that with us? 
It's attached firmly to the pole. It won't budge. I'll take the pole with us then. It's all yours. Yay, we have a pole. A handy metal pole. Oh, and we also have the invisibility belt. I didn't look at that yet. Terminator's invisibility belt. Ah, oh, come on. Not even any fun message there. Let's see what this is. It's full of thermal detonators. Ooh. That sounds like it could be fun. You pick up one of the detonators. Be careful. You could blow your fingers off with that thing. Yes. Giving Roger explosives sounds like a bad idea. Used for blowing stuff to little bits. It has an impact switch. So in other words, don't drop it. All right. Well, we'll see if we can get to that force beam generator thingy in the next video.